Okay, so let's take a, a, a brief look at tempered glass. And I mean, some features of tempered glass that you might you might know is it's it's fairly high strength. I mean, as far as glasses go. Um, and we'll explore why that's the case. And, and the other thing is it's you know I'll I'll, I'll say it's relatively safe um, when it breaks, when things go wrong, and it fractures. Okay, so this is actually these are a couple of reasons that it's used in the side windows of of automobiles. Um, so it's quite strong. It's not likely to break, but if it does break, it breaks into small pieces. That's what I mean by safe. It breaks into small um, pieces, so you don't have a large jagged piece that might cut into an occupant or something like that. So it, it's quite strong. Now, how do we achieve that strength? Um, and so what I want to do is take a look at um, a cross section. Uh, cross section through a piece of tempered glass and so what happens is initially the um, the, the glass is is uh, quite uh, quite hot okay and so if it's hot it's uh, let's say it's red okay and, and you know I mean it doesn't actually get red but uh, but I'm just trying to show you here that that is hot and uh, drive it home with with color so it's initially quite hot and it's got quite a large volume um, I mean relative in, in relative terms it's got a large volume it's it's a it's it's actually st still in this it's already in the solid state but it's still um, um, it's still quite uh, uh, quite hot and it's thermally expanded uh, significantly then we could say well what would happen if you um, you, you cooled that down and say you cooled the surfaces rapidly okay with a jet of cold air or something so you rapidly cool the surfaces and so I'll try to show you the next step in time here. Um, so um, after you've you've rapidly cooled it, um, you cool the surfaces at least. The the surfaces then become cooler, um, and they've cooled quite quickly. And I'm just trying to pick that with the blue color here. So they, they've they've cooled. But the, the center continues to be um, quite hot and, and larger volume, okay? But there's another interesting thing that happens with, with glasses. Because of the, the fairly complicated structure of the glass, it's made of these uh, uh, silicon and oxygen and, and uh, the silica... Uh, is bonded to to, um, four, to to four other oxygens, and the oxygen shares between two. It, it forms a fairly complicated uh, structure, and it can in fact form um, networks um, of interconnected primary bonds. And the um, so we're talking about silica glass here. It's it's a fairly complex structure, and it's uh, if if it cools really really rapidly. You have sort of frozen in some, if you will, excess volume. So there's actually a larger volume in in the in the glass that's cooled really really rapidly, and then the interior that was still hot and cools at a slower rate actually achieves a a smaller final volume and so what happens then is that this center the central region that's continuing to contract is trying to get smaller but it's constrained by the outside so what happens is the center that's trying to get smaller but is constrained by the outer surfaces is pulled into tension and then the surfaces that are being pulled by the slow cooling center are actually in compression. Okay, 
So we have now these surfaces that are in compression, the center in tension. And as you know, ceramics are, are good in, in um, compression, right? Poor in, in tension. So ceramics are good in compression. And furthermore, if you put this into bending then, so say you, you apply a load like this or something, some finite load, well, the surface beginning in compression begins with a negative stress, if you will, on the surface, on the lower surface, and or, or actually I guess we'd call it positive in this case, before it becomes tensile, before you get tensile uh, stresses on the lower surface of the beam, you've, you can have quite a substantial load pressed on it. So if you have your window in your car and you press on it from the inside or from the outside, the opposite surface of the of the window is still potentially under significant compression, um, even with a, a, a significant load uh, placed on it. So for that reason, it's it's quite high strength. Well, actually, for for the two reasons: one that it's in residual compression, which acts to close uh, cracks up, but because of the residual compressive state initially, you can have a, a finite um, stress applied to it that results in still um, either compressive or even uh, neutral uh, stress on the uh, opposite side, side of the beam that would normally be in tension. And then the final thing is, well, it's safe when it fractures. Well, why is that? Well, there's a lot of, there's a tensile, uh, uh, sorry, a, a stress distribution across this, right? Compression and tension. So there's what we call residual stress. Um, residual stress, or, or another way of saying that, is that there's stored strain energy. So there's actually a fair a fair amount of stored strain energy embodied in a piece of tensile a piece of tempered glass. And then what so so when you do fracture a piece of this glass, or if it if it does fracture, so say you've got fracture, well because of that high stored strain energy, it's liberated it's it's, trans, uh, it's um, it transformed, if you will. It's liberated as what? As surface energy. New surfaces are created as surface energy. So if you've got a high state of strain energy and you fracture it, you liberate a huge amount of surface energy. What does high surface energy mean? High surface area, which means fine particles, well, small pieces. Right, small pieces, which is exactly what we said initially, or we knew to be the case, and we've been able to explain it by talking about this stra uh, stress distribution through the thickness. So I talked about briefly. I mean, about the the compressive st um, st uh, stresses on the surface being achieved through thermal processes, but but also uh, you can do this through um, um, chemical processes. You know, an example of that is uh, Gorilla Glass. So ions with a larger size are diffused into the surface, and they, because the ions that diffuse in the ion um, exchange, the ions come in and they take up extra space in the in this in this uh, network, and um, result in a increase in volume at the surfaces, which creates compressive stresses, and you get the same result in the end, just through a chemical process. And so it's a, a beautiful example of uh, tempered, um, or of, um, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say, a beautiful, this is a beautiful example altogether of um, some, some good engineering of, uh, to get properties that we want from some careful control of the microstructure. All right, thanks.